as I'm hopefully going to show, I think the Cartesian approach is much more difficult, okay? But there is one saving grace that the Cartesian approach has, which is that all I do is I name this point on the ellipse. Because I'm in Cartesian terms, I've got no theta to speak of, right? So I'm just going to call this guy x1, y1. That's the point I'm interested in now, okay? And I want to find the equation of the tangent there. Again, I've got the point, I just need the gradient, right? Now, being that I don't, I'm, not, I'm not allowing myself to use these parametric forms, I don't have any theta involved, I now have no choice. Remember how I said that this is not set up nicely for differentiation? I'm just going to have to deal with him now, okay? What I'm going to call on is something I introduced a little bit ago, and I said it wasn't necessary, but here is going to be a huge help. I'm going to use implicit differentiation on this. Okay? Implicit differentiation is going to be very useful because then I don't need to make y the subject. I can just differentiate it as it is, and then out it will unfold. So watch. Okay? First step, and I'm going to try and put as many steps as I can here so nothing is skipped over. I'm going to differentiate every single term with respect to x. Okay? So I'm going to go d on dx of this plus d on dx of this equals d on dx of that. Okay, now I'm just I'm writing this out and I'm making it painfully obvious so you can see this is the operation being applied to everything. Differentiation is just an operator, just like logs and exponentials and multiplication. You can just do fancier things with it, okay? It's, uh, it's more of a function, not less. So having a look at this, two parts of this are easy and one part is a bit weird looking. So let's tackle them one at a time. I think this is the easiest. What's the derivative with respect to x? Zero. Zero. It's a constant, so it vanishes away. That's good. Here, even though it's a bit messy, that one on a squared is just a constant. So really what I'm differentiating is x squared. Agreed? What's the derivative of x squared? 2x. Two 2x, two two okay. 2x, and that one on a squared just hangs on for right. Okay, then we get to this guy. Okay. Now, just don't write this part down, but I'm going to, just so that we have, our brains don't get too full. Again, I want you to recognize the 1 on b squared, just a constant, I can take him out of the way. Is that okay? Right? So don't write this bit down. But this is what we're calculating. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, y is just, it's not just a numeral here, it's not just a pronumeral. Um, it's also itself a function of x, right? So therefore, I need to apply chain rule to that. Remember what I said when I introduced implicit differentiation? I said <coughs> a fancy name for the chain rule. Okay. So when I do this, right? Don't worry about him. He'll just he'll just stick out the front. What do I do with this? What is what does chain rule tell me to do with this? Yeah. Bring the power to the front. Okay. So I'm going to differentiate the outside first. So you bring that power down. In fact, I'm going to write it here. Well, we can do it together. Now. Um, you've got the 1 on b squared at the front. You bring the power down, so I write 2. <laughs> then what do you do with power? By one. Good, it reduces by 1. That's the outside, and then I've got to do the, the, inside. the inside. Now, the inside function, I don't even know what it is, but the outside function is called y, right? So therefore, it's just dy on dx. That's the derivative of the inside function, right? Whatever it happens to be. But the whole point of implicit is, oh yeah, that's actually the thing I want, right? That d1 and dx, ta-da, there he is. So now all I need to do is just rearrange a little bit. Okay? How am I going to rearrange this? I'll give you a second, see what you would do with that to make d1 and dx the subject. Go ahead. So we, let's notice a couple of things. Firstly, firstly, um, the weirdest thing about implicit differentiation is that you end up getting y's, or thetas, or whatever your other variable was, you end up getting them in the derivative. That's kind of strange, we're not used to that. But that's because we differentiate it while the x's and y's were entangled with each other. So it's no surprise that you end up with both of them in your derivative. That's no problem, for the x's and y's, I know exactly what the x and the y are. Like, they're just some numbers, so I can just put them in. Okay? The second thing I got asked was, it's negative. It's negative? Did I expect it to be negative? Now, you can work out with me, without, without touching any like algebra or anything like that, that it should be negative. It absolutely should be negative. And I'm going to use this diagram to help me. Okay? Think about this for a minute. A and B, real numbers. Agreed? Yeah. They're real numbers. So therefore, A squared and B squared are positive. Yes? So therefore, I don't have to worry about those in terms of affecting the sign of this, because that's what I'm trying to work out. Now, I'll really think about the X and the Y. Okay? Now, for instance, 
the particular tangent that I have drawn is in the first quadrant. Agreed? Yes. That means that x and y are both positive. positive. Does that gradient look negative to you? Yes. yes. It does, right? Um, there's another quadrant that will also give me a negative gradient. Where is it? Uh, it's three. quadrant yeah. three, right? Yeah. What do you know about x and y in quadrant three? They're both, negative. They're both negative. So you see their negatives will cancel, leaving you with this guy. And then, of course, you can rehearse this for quadrant two and four. One of them will be negative, which will cancel with the negative at the front, giving you the positive tangents, which we'd better get. Okay? Does that make sense? So use these things. Use the geometry to your advantage. Don't just appeal to, well, do I have to just look at all my lines to make sure I didn't make an arithmetic mistake? That's exactly what we should get.